Hello again to all and sundry, I'm Paragon Saber. Welcome back to the Great Partition. I do believe this is episode 8. Last time, it being the second episode we've run on Speed 4, we saw, of course, quite a few things happening. Mazovia ate the rest of the Teutonic Order with little fanfare. While I wasn't looking, Peskov was eaten by the combined forces of the Livonian Order and Estonia, though it looks like the former is gunning for the latter trying to uh, take all the lands it has at the start of the game, with a bit of a plus one in Pskov itself. Not a bad province at 14 development. Muscovy won a war with Novgorod, though didn't take anything from Novgorod itself, instead taking Smolensk and Rzhev from Smolensk down here. Smolensk retaliating by continuing to seek the protection of Novgorod, now reduced to a one province minor, they have joined Novgorod's trade league. Speaking of trade and Novgorod, the city of Finnmark actually took some pretty bad losses in a war against Norway, who has recovered significantly since being reduced to just uh, southern Norway and the islands earlier. Norway winning a war against Sweden, and presumably Finnmark as well, taking all of Sweden's provinces except for Bergslagen, Vosterbotten, Lapland, and Jokmok. Kajanalan there as well, but Norway couldn't have really done all that much about that, unless they wanted it handed back to Novgorod. England looking to finish off Scotland here very soon, and France continuing to just get partitioned. They do hold on to a large, if predominantly composed of one province minor, alliance chain, so uh, maybe they'll be able to stay alive a little longer. Naples also did some more expansion while we weren't looking. They've taken Urbino and Romagna, and I've checked and seen that Florence is their vassal, so uh, they're definitely the predominant Italian power, Though Milan might have something to say about that in the future. Over here, Sarohan's gunning for Bulgaria. Bulgaria also having to deal with Byzantine separatists. I uh, do remember the saying that I was trying desperately to grab last time, that being turnabout is fair play. So perhaps the Byzantines will get some land back. Though really, now it looking more likely for that to fall into the hands of Sarohan. Other than that, Persia very powerful over here in the semi-Middle East-ish area. They do have all of the Southern Caucasus, and uh, probably looking at the likes of Armenia and Syria as their next targets. Who knows, maybe we'll see a second Achaemenid Empire. In China, Emperor Yan still holding onto the mandate, actually has secured Mongolia as a tributary state as well. so doing a little better than their predecessor in Ming, who has lost yet another war to Wu, and now is as partitioned as I said they were a couple episodes back. That's all I'm going to say for now. I'm going to go ahead and start her up again and uh, see how things have gone. The year 1500 did pass with little fanfare uh, during the last episode. I did check for colonialism uh, in between episodes. I'm not seeing it yet. Uh, Castile and Portugal... Sorry, Portugal's not really even alive. I mean, they are. They they do have uh, Sierra Leone down here, as well as Cape Verde. And the Azores, but losing even Madeira to Castile in their last war with them. So, regardless, Castile not able to uh, have a new world nation. They have colonized the Grain Coast, but uh, regardless, colonialism simply hasn't popped yet. Perhaps this is going to be one of those games where it doesn't show up until the 1530s or something. The Great Powers after the turn of the century, exactly the same as last time. I believe the only change is that Austria has eclipsed Persia for now as far as Great Power ranking is concerned. Everybody else in, I believe, the exact same place as we saw them last time. Uh, maybe a few gains here and there in development, but not enough to eclipse their neighbors or rather their great power competitors. England has completed their wiping out of Scotland, taking Sutherland, Fife, Aberdeenshire, the Western Isles, I think, and Orkney. So, the main island in Britain, now completely under England's control, I'm sure they'll be looking to consolidate Ireland later on. This war up here with Estonia continuing. There's Narva siege down, Raval a level 3 fort, so the Livonians and Riga will have to combine their forces if they want to siege that down. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
Nogai pretty heavily occupied by Uzbek right now. Notably, Uzbek, the only horde nation to have not embraced feudalism. They're the only one in this red, as compared to everybody else's not really that lovely shade of yellow. But uh, that not stopping the Uzbeks, they are going after Nogai, Nogai who was formerly a great power. Have not mentioned them yet, Odiev did a significant amount of expanding. They were at war with Crimea and completely ate uh, Crimea's longtime vassal of Kiev. So Crimea is still looking okay, but uh, split up now by the Genoan lands in between them. Genoa apparently losing Azaraba to perhaps the Crimean separatists, but also losing Matrika, Matrega. Saruhan has done quite well for themselves, taking Macedonia, Plovdiv, and Burgas, but also handing Castoria back to Byzantium. So, uh, the Eastern Romans continuing to teeter on the edge, but Saruhan, looking good. Hoping they can uh, maintain those alliances as long as they need, because really, at this point, they are looking strong. But uh, if they lost their alliance with Karaman, I think that would really tumble down on them. Karaman actually losing quite a few of their alliances. I seem to remember them being allied to not only Dilkadir Sauruhan, but also Mentessa, Kandar, and maybe even Syria at one point. So maybe there will be conflict there. In the islands, Cyprus a Mamlukian vassal, as usual, in uh, normal games of EU4. The Knights allied to Genoa Venice, and actually in Genoa's trade league this time, as opposed to Venice's. Crete still allied with Bulgaria Epirus. They've been called in to a few different wars uh, during this campaign, but uh, they've not really been uh, willing to join any of them. Morea still alive in Venice, uh, Venice's trade league. Not really much to say about them. That said, Bulgaria really feeling the hurt after that war, and uh, I am sure that they'll be eaten again in due time, completely. Though Bulgarian separatists have done it once, and we've seen how strong a force they can muster, perhaps they can do it again. Kildar occupied by some Protestant zealots who do have a bigger army than them, so uh, we did see the Reformation ha uh, did start last time, and for now it's looking to be a very strong Reformation. It does have its usual footholds in the British Isles and up here in uh, Scandinavia, and we do have the Reformed religion starting as well. Barry, actually a Reformed center of Reformation. Interesting that. Frankfurt Protestant, Gloucestershire Protestant, and Eger Protestant. So where will the other Reformed centers of Reformation pop up? We'll just have to see. That said, here is the look at the religion map mode as... I sounded Canadian there as fully as I can display it. Looks like Utsang is uh, Vajrayana, so a little bit of Buddhism hanging on over here. Or rather, a lot of Buddhism. A lot of Theravada down here. Uh, Champa showing up on its own as a nation. Ah, it is Hindu. Interesting. That is pretty close to Champa's color, as you can see, though uh, Champa a little bit duller shade of blue than the blue that they have used to represent Hinduism. Over here, Emperor Yan at war with Jin, and who else? Shun and Qi. Seem to remember Qi being one of his tributary states. Nope, that's, uh, that's Chen. Qi and Chen completely separate. Chen over here, Qi right here. Regardless, that's a lot of people for Yan to fight alone. Is anybody else... Yes, Mongolia also involved in that. Is this a war for the Mandate? Nope, just a conquest uh, of Karanaranula. Would that be this province? It is. So Jin looking to uh, snipe this enclave of Mongolia's and add it to their uh, expanding yellowness. I'm not sure if she expanded or lost provinces in there. I'm going to guess that uh, an expansion occurred. They do have a couple enclaves of Min and Yi, uh, Ming and Yi, and uh, definitely 
one of the states that's done quite well at consolidating its power over in the Chinese region. Korea took a pretty big bite out of Yeren. We saw them at war last time, and uh, seem to recall their limits only stretching to about here, maybe, earlier. So they took a lot in land area, though I'm not sure how the development is. Eh, sixes, not bad. Nine. Fours and a three. Eh, well, not a bad bit of expansion by any means. Wasugi now trapped by Ashikaga on both sides. And we do have a war going on down here. Hosokawa and Ouchi at war with one another. Is that it? Yep, just Hosokawa versus Ouchi. Despite... well, sorry. No. Hosokawa under pretty heavy occupation by Ouchi, and uh, Ouchi now sitting on their capital. Thankfully only a level 1 fort, so they can siege that down with 3k. Really looks like it's going to come down to Ashikaga versus Uesugi in uh, Japan. My money is on the Shogun right now, that being Ashikaga. Malacca kicked off of Pasai's island and also losing Johor and Bintan. So uh, they'd come back pretty significantly from their starting position. That not enough. Lagor spat out again from Ayutthaya. They are also free, so uh, perhaps Ayutthaya just lost a war and was forced to spit out its two former vassals. Regardless, I'm happy about that because they corrected uh, my mistakes. Ahmednagar looking a little bigger than they were earlier. This is usually Gujarat's territory, but they weakened enough that by the partition that uh, they are now gone. Also, a goodbye to Kathiawar, who we saw over here earlier, but uh, they're not here anymore. Abednagar expanding at the expense of Sindh, mostly, and perhaps one of those tags that I mentioned that is not there anymore. The Mamluks at war with Ethiopia and Medribari. This a very significant war. Right now, it looks like the Ethiopia and Medribari alliance has a few more troops than the Mamluks, but the Mamluks building up in order to uh, counteract that. Definitely find myself cheering for the uh, for the Copts here, ha having very recently finished a game. Though, is that Hejaz involved as well? Yes, yes, Hejaz allied with the Mamluks and called into this war. So, anything can happen, but in terms of sheer troop number, the Muslims looking stronger here, and yes, them managing to catch Ethiopia's main army and really put the herd on it. So the Mamluks will be expanding south, something they don't usually look to do in a lot of campaigns. Perhaps there's something in their AI that uh, triggers them as soon as they hit a certain technology level. Regardless, we do have Bulgarian Separatists that actually spawned in Hungary, now ravaging through Saruhan. Byzantium uh, holding on to the mission to recover Greece, and Achaea actually occupied by Naxus. How did they manage to draw Naxus's ire? That would be through a fourth Epirot conquest of Corfu. That'll do it. Epirus appearing to bite off more than they could chew. Perhaps they will be lost. Only a level 1 fort in their capital, so Nexos really happy to just do everything for their uh, for their allies over in Corfu. And Persia has eaten a large chunk of Dolkadir. I uh, give a throwback to my comment about the second Achaemenid Empire. Gains over here including Erzin Khan, Diyarbakir, and Erzurum. So, uh, yeah, again, Persia looking quite strong, though I don't think they quite have the renaissance yet. As soon as they do, they are the number one great power. That's pretty cool. Oh, poor Ethiopia. Really hurting pretty bad from the combined assault of so many uh, Muslim nations. Down here in West Africa, haven't looked at them in a while. We have some uh, Kanembornuan separatists for Air. Kanembornu having been partitioned between Yao and Air, and perhaps a little bit to Kano. We have some Oyo Separatists being destroyed by Benin. Songhai looking to be the eminent power in the region. They definitely have the most land, though uh, Kong a rising power as well. Mali looking kind of sickly compared to their usual state. Currently at war with both Fulo and Mosi and Jene and Kong both in separate wars. Yeah, Mali going to hurt from this one. Uh, Yatenga, one of the revolter tags, still alive, just barely. 
but with no allies and likely to join either Kong or Songhai, depending on... Ah, that being a combined truce with both of them, we'll see who manages to take the last bite out of them. Things still in uneasy stalemate mode down here in Central Africa. Cuba kind of une uh, uncomfortably sandwiched between Congo and Kikonja. Kikonja having a larger army at the moment, but uh, really, Cuba, <laughs> Cuba allied with both of them. Now that's a way to stay alive through diplomacy. I don't care how good it says this man's diplo skill is, he gets a 6 in my book. Though, uh, one can only wonder how long that's going to last. Really, Kuba could be a kingmaker over in this region if one of those alliances breaks and, uh, one of those, you know, uh, Kikonja and Congo end up coming to blows. It's whoever has Kuba on their side that's probably going to win, although they could get some help from the Great Lakes region. Mogadishu looking quite strong over here in uh, the Horn of Africa. Mogadishu usually starting out as a vassal of Ajaran and has eaten a lot of its former overlord's land. Nicely done on their port. Hobyo exists. Uh, they started out alive, got eaten by Ajaran, and perhaps were released by Mogadishu in their last war. Regardless, they do have 6k, so they can at least attempt to defend themselves. Looks like a war happening over here in India. Vijayanagar occupied by Kandesh. Where in the world is Kandesh? Uh, let's find him. Kandesh up here north of Bahmanis. What? Well, regardless, the war over and no territory changing hands, so... I, I really don't have any idea what that war could have been over. Perhaps a diplomatic insult. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Sukathai losing a little bit to Ithaya since the last time we saw them. And, uh... uh Ming still holding on to a couple provinces down here. As well as Jingzhu, Hefei, and Haiju. Ah, interesting. So it appears that Emperor Yan might have lost that war and uh, perhaps was forced to give some territory back to Ming. Or uh, maybe this was under somebody else, but Jin looking very strong right now. They did manage to take that province, win that war with Emperor Yan, whose mandate is plummeting. Really, whoever wants to seize the mandate, be that Korea, be that Jin, be that perhaps even Ming again, could do so whenever they wanted. Yan going to take so much damage both fire and shock, that uh, it's just open for the taking. It certainly happens when China not consolidated. It is nice seeing a game without a Super Ming. It's also nice seeing a game without the Ottomans, to be frank. Though uh, players can generally do that themselves by playing the likes of Byzantium or uh, some of the other powers in this region. Byzantine, sorry, the Bulgarian separatists still around, still plaguing Saruhan, who is involved in war against Syria, Kandar, and Aretna. Would that be? Yes. Yeah, it looks like Karaman either initiated that war or was the recipient of that war. Syrian conquest of Adana. Tensions have boiled over in this region. Syria really holding on to a quite strong army. They do have some great provinces. They have Damascus, a 34. They have Baghdad, a 21. They have Aleppo, Halab, a 22. I mean, in three provinces, that's pretty close to 80 or 90 development. I mean, well, what? 34, 21, and 22? So, uh, 43 and 34? 77? Pretty good for three provinces. I mean, that's about on the scale of northern Italy. Speaking of... Naples continuing to attempt to expand. Looks like uh, Naples actually making Siena do his dirty work for him. Also, Venice at war with the Pope. Ah, that's just a big war initiated by Naples, I think. The Neapolitan conquest of Ferrara, which has drawn in just most of Italy. Uh, right now, the Neapolitan side looking pretty strong. We'll see how that goes, and... Should Naples take Ferrara, they will share a border with Emperor Austria. And Austria doing quite well for themselves, uh, taking really 
rather small gains from the Burgundian inheritance, just Franche-Comte and Cambrai, and uh, turning that into great gains in the French region, taking up to and including Paris itself. England dealing with some noble rebels and Protestant zealots. I think it's a bit late for War of the Roses, so maybe just a normal uh, noble rebellion. Gotta be careful with those subject interactions. Regardless, they're going after Kildar, trying to take Ireland as expected. How's Novgorod doing? Novgorod at war with its former trading city of Finnmark, Gotland, and Norway. Uh, doubt Gotland will be touched by much by this, but uh, we'll see what Novgorod can do here. Sweden now reduced to only Jokmok and Kajanaland, Norway expanding yet again at their expense. The uh, Helm of Paradox falling to its brethren on the Scandinavian Peninsula. Hungary also involved in this war against Naples. Most interesting. Uh, we'll see how that works. Are they allied to Ferrara? They are. You know, I think I saw that earlier, but uh, the old memory sometimes goes. The mandate continuing to deteriorate for Emperor Jan. The end of that emperorship has got to be near. Did they lose another war? I don't know. But they were at 13, now they're at 7. And the Great Horde is back! Chernigov just gone, and uh, the Great Horde springing to life from the ashes of uh, what was formerly Chernigov and Ryazan. Ryazan's still holding on to these three provinces, but uh, seemed to recall them having things like Tembov and perhaps Yelich before. Regardless, Crimea looking pretty strong again. Their lands linked by their retaking of Tin, or perhaps the Separatists handing it over to them. They've had their ebbs and flows in this one, but uh, overall having more than what they started with. Zaporozhye still alive, allied with Wallachia and independent, which is better than we can say from earlier. We have a triumvirate, really, of states over in uh, in this region. Moldavia free of Crimea, good for them. And Wallachia commanding itself a bit of an alliance chain, guaranteed by Nitra, who uh, appears to have gotten Zemplin back. So the Slovenians taken the hurt from that coalition, or rather, pseudo-coalition more earlier, but uh, doing as well for themselves as they can, considering those circumstances. Most of Galicia Valenia going to them. And we see Theodoro over here attempting to help the last remnant, remnant of Galicia Valenia against Mazovia. Mazovia very strong right now, as they were the recipient of quite a bit of Teutonic land, including their usual capital of Marienburg. A 15 development province, though we see Danzig actually go into Brandenburg. That is really the jewel of the region. Excellent for trade, both the Vistula estuary and a coastal center of trade, so that's 20 trade power. If you happen to be a merchant republic, you can slap a trading post on that and make it even better. Pskavian separatists over here for the Livonians. They did take all of Estonia, and, uh, well, Pskav not happy about that. That is 11k over there. We could see Pskov emerging again, though as soon as they cross over into Novgorod's land, I'm guessing Novgorod might have something to say about that. Speaking of Novgorod, still holding on, but Muscovy with another two-star general. Nazarye Rajevsky, another 4-3. I think he has the exact same stats as Yuri from earlier, a 4-3-1. As soon as Muscovy decides it wants Novgorod, Novgorod's gonna have to deal with that, and uh, they better have some alliances. Right now, they just have their, the guys in their trading league. Uh, do still have Finland as a vassal, but what Novgorod needs right now to survive is an alliance. Whether with unusually strong Odiev, with, er, with Poland-Lithuania, maybe with the Livonians, but again, as soon as Muscovy comes knocking right now, they're, they're going to be uh, they're going to be hurting. The Great Horde. What? Kasim is alive again, hello again, but rather removed from their usual province of Kazimov, instead making their appearance down in Borisovglebsk, and uh, no allies. 
apparently released from maybe a yeah uh, perhaps released from a peace deal between uh, the Great Horde and Zaporozzi. This area really just consistently shifting and changing. No guy, formerly a great power, reduced now to pretty close to its usual lands, except it has lost the likes of Ustjurt, Kungarot, Chekti, Torkara. Uh, Tork it's still holding on to some pretty good provinces in, uh, in Ostrakhan, at least, and its capital, not a bad one by any means. Though, uh, no guy appears to have drawn the wrath of the Siberian Khanate. Severe a tributary state of Uzbek and allied with Bashkiria. Bashkiria also alive, though uh, not with its gold mine in Bashkir that held onto by Perm. It was still allied with Muscovy, uh, guaranteeing Bashkiria, so anybody who wants to get it Perm, say Uzbek, might want to attack Bashkiria in order to get Perm in without, uh, without drawing in Muscovy, and it's now close to 40,000 strong army. Really, things not looking good for Novgorod. The Bulgarian Separatists have been trying to relocate forever, but they finally make it one province over. Saruhan's small army doing pretty well considering the circumstances there. And this war over here, Karaman, uh, really having the hurt put on him by Syria. Aretna gets two of its provinces back. Syria takes Adana and Isel, as well as Mirage and uh, really emerging as the power to possibly challenge the Mamluks in the region. Allied with Kandar, Mantessa, and Aretna, so Sarahan on the wrong end of that alliance chain, still allied with Karaman, but the alliance with the Mamluks will help them. Though, uh, if Syria decides that they can challenge the Mamluks, who, by the way, have taken all the way down to Beha in that war against Ethiopia, cutting off some of their provinces, though Ethiopia really maintaining its core, uh, looks like the Mamluks might have, might have uh, caused them to give some provinces back to Kaffa. Interesting that. Anything happening up here in Europe? I know we've gone over them a couple times, but... Gascony defeating some noble rebels. Gascony actually owning all the way up to Maine. Uh, seem to recall that being given back to France. Yeah. France, dead. France is dead. <laughs> the last remnants in Orléans and Lyonnais, now under fire from Provence, Holstein, Austria, and Cologne. The French tag going to be gone, but anybody who has French culture can form it. Including somebody like Gascony, though they would have to get Paris back from Austria, and Austria a very strong power. Retaining the Emperorship, though losing quite a bit of Imperial authority because of heretic princes right now. Guessing that means the Reformation continuing to spread. Very much so. Do see a few more uh, Centers of Reformation, I think. Memmingen a Reformed Center of Reformation. We did already see Barry as one of those earlier. Though, uh, I'm not seeing the third one. Where is the third reformed center of reformation in total i see one two three four five hmm. the nations of europe uh, rather reluctant to convert to reformed not not really sure what to say i mean i, I or at least i expected there's always a third one maybe maybe there's only two maybe i missed something regardless uh Protestantism looking pretty healthy, even the likes of Brandenburg and Saxony looking to have adopted that. So, uh, northeastern Germany, a uh, hotbed of Protestantism. That can't be fun for the Emperor, especially considering that he is now hemorrhaging imperial authority. Maybe not at the same rate that Emperor Jan was hemorrhaging mandate, though. Losing 0.13 a month. Again, the Mandate of Heaven is anyone's for the taking. Emperor Jan allied with Khmer, down here in the south. Uh, Khmer, decently strong, and I guess if they could get a lot of military access, they could uh, go up there and help, but Jan's army will take so much damage, both in shock and fire phases, that really it's just a matter of time before whoever wants the Mandate takes it. Korea dealing with presumably uh, Zhangzhou separatists? No, Haishi separatists. 
pretty b a large group of them as well. I'm not seeing Korea's army, though they do have a 30 strong, uh, 32 strong navy. And there is the timer, so Korea will uh, will have to hold that thought on you, buddy. The year is now 1518. The great powers still actually not unchanged. Korea has managed to get itself back up onto the great powers list. Apparently, uh, I, I can't remember at whose expense. Uh, let's see, Hungary's still up there. England's still up there. I ah at Poland, Poland, Lithuania's expense. Having the strong Mazovia really hurting them. Regardless, the timer beeped. I can't go on too much longer. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.